Hello, this is Dr. Stephanie Munoz. I serve as the Director of Clinical and Academic Research at the Maryland University of Integrative Health. In this short presentation, I'll be providing some guidance for the creation and submission of a research design abstract to the MUIH Research Symposium. If you haven't already, please be sure to review the guidelines in a video for overall abstract writing and submission that applies to all different types of abstracts. This pr presentation here is specifically for those who are submitting a research design abstract. A research design is a submission where a study is being proposed, but that study has not been initiated or it's been initiated but not completed. In either case, there are no results to report. There's a design that's being suggested. You might want to propose a research design if you are planning to conduct a study and you'd like to get some feedback on that study before implementing it. The research symposium can be a great opportunity to share your ideas and get input and feedback from colleagues and faculty uh, that might be useful as you begin the process of, of planning to execute the research itself. You can also propose a research design that you have no intention of executing, um, but as an exercise to think about how you might plan a study that could be a contribution to the field that maybe at some point someone else might um, carry through. So you want to start with a title that is about 10 to 12 words and if possible include information about who the target population will be and what the intervention or the exposure is. So in an intervention study like a randomized controlled trial or a pre-post um, study, you're going to talk about the intervention. If you're looking at an observational study that compares exposure to a certain outcome, you're going to explain what those are. Uh, so both the intervention and, or the exposure and the, especially the primary outcome or any other outcomes um, that might be important. And in the title, you want to emphasize what will be investigated in the study, including what the basic study design is. So if it's a randomized controlled trial or a pilot study or an observational trial, you want to make sure, an observational study rather, you want to make sure that that's in the title. Please follow convention for capitalization, and you see an example here of what that might look like. Following that is the author information. Now, in our on our submission site, there are fields to fill in for all of this, so you're going to see a place to put each author's name and their department, um, include any authors that might be from departments outside of MUIH, certainly. <laughs> and you're going to want to list the authors in order of involvement. So the first author should always be the person who has spearheaded the project and been most involved in making it happen. And then um, it follows in kind. The only exception to that is that sometimes if there's a more senior researcher who's kind of providing supervision, mentoring, guidance to the process, then they might be listed as the last author. And if you have any questions, please contact me. Um, there are some, some nice guidelines on the web that can help you determine what the appropriate authorship sh order should be. Um, I'm showing you an example here. Now there are two authors and both of these authors are from the same department. So in that case you would not have the superscript and the numbers. But this is just a demonstration for what it often looks like. If you have authors who are from, who have different affiliations, you're going to see a superscript next to each of them and then a list of their affiliations below. This is followed by the background, and the background should be providing some, some context for the work. If there's a condition that you're talking about, you're going to want to include something about the epidemiology of the problem, uh, any research that exists that is directly related to your concern, and then what's lacking in the research. So what don't we know? What's the gap that your study is going to fill that explains to the reader why your study is useful or necessary? Uh, and you're going to see an example of just such a thing below. So it has a little bit of context and background um, about what exists and the state of the problem and then what could happen next. And that's going to be followed by the research objective. So that's where you lay out what it is that the study aims to do or will aim to do. You may just have one research objective. In some study designs, you're going to have multiple research objectives, and they should all be listed. Um, and in some other conferences, you might see the, the background and the objectives tied together. In our template, they're separated out. 
and then you get into the method. So this, uh, the, I apologize, the text is a little bit small here because in a research design, the methods are the main point. Remember, there are no results, right? So you really want to go into a fair amount of detail about what you plan to do because that's what you're going to be able to get feedback about. So in this example, you see a lot of detail about what the authors planned to do. And um, depending on whether it's a quantitative or a qualitative study, you're going to have uh, you know, survey instruments or you're going to have particular measures that you might use or certain statistical um, techniques that might be involved. So um, consider what type of study it is and put some thought into how you plan to execute that because there should be a fair amount of detail about that so that the feedback that you get can really help you to refine that approach. And then instead of having results after the methods, you're going to go right to the conclusion. And that summarizes what the study is, why it would be valuable, what problem it would solve or issue it would address, and what might be of particular interest about it, how it might be applied to clinical practice or policy decisions, etc. If as you're planning your research design abstract, you have questions or would like additional support, I highly encourage you to contact your academic director or program director to figure out what kind of support might be available to you specifically in your field. You want to bring a draft of that abstract to the abstract writing workshop so that the available support can help you to refine that and get ready for submission. And if you have any questions about the actual submission pro process, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks so much, and I look forward to seeing your submission.